is actually uh, uh, two things. It's, a, it's an organization that's incorporated from Rated L. Ray, as everyone knows. But it's also a community, and that community is where most of the decisions and discussions are made regarding the critical internet resources. Um, ICANN, as the organization, um, implements policies that are developed within the context of the community. And um, we're not the only ones. The, the regional internet registries act in a similar way. They are organizations, but they're also communities. They develop policies, and I'm sure uh, Steve will talk about this on enjoying stealing his thunder, um, uh, taking uh, the RARs will develop policies regarding IP addresses um, and their utilization in a community bottom-up driven process. Our mission is to allocate the scarce internet protocol resources, uh, including the IPv4 resources. For those of you who don't know what IPv4 and IPv6 are, which I doubt there's very many people in the room, uh, an IPv4 number, um, there are four billion of them. Um, we'll be talking about how many we've handed out. Um, with the IPv6 numbers, there's a whole lot more of them um, because of their 128-bit nature. And the uh, neutral practice that Aaron had initially about IPv6 adoption is over. We are urging people to adopt IPv6 uh, in face of the runout that is coming. You should understand that of the fixed number uh, of IPv4 addresses, uh, all 75 percent have been issued, 13 and a half percent are unavailable. So the, the free pool of remaining IPv4 resources that are held by IANA, um, which contract is administered by ICANN, uh, that's the remaining pool. But if you actually read the list of text, it says, you know, internet governance includes all sorts of other things beyond domain names, including critical internet resources. But then every meeting I go to about critical internet resources touches on domain names, I mean, domain name system. So I'm sort of, I sort of struggle with what's the preoccupation with this part of the, of the network. Um, obviously, there are lots of reasons in the past that have been that way, and I expect some of those won't go away. But to this point, there are a lot of things that make up the internet. There's submarine cables, you know, there's satellite issues, and no one ever wants to talk about that. Main name system um, for a variety of reasons, and I think um, you know it's one of the one of the sort of the crosses that ICANN has to bear, and the fact that the network is so decentralized, the internet, it, but the one organizing part and the one organizing group tends to be ICANN. So and that's sort of a natural reason, but I do sort of struggle with when you read the WSIS text. How many years has it been? Four years now since that particular text. I don't know, all the years run together for me at this point. Um, that text was negotiated. It really explicitly says there are other things beyond domain names, including critical internet resources. So I would hope that as this, um, the US IGF sort of continues in its evolution, um, and we are very, as Larry said today, very happy that this one's happening, we actually look at other things, you know, as, as, as a sort of national priority, but also going into global discussion of other issues that actually deal with that critical internet resources.